So exactly one year ago today, I started my journey across America where I learned a new skateboarding trick in every single state for 50 days in a row while daily vlogging the whole thing. And yeah, this was a pretty insane challenge, I have to say. And I really, looking back on it now, I can't believe I actually completed it. But, you know, as I'm reflecting on it, you know, a year later, and I'm realizing it was such a pivotal point in my life and I learned so many lessons. So figured I'd make a video and just talk about those lessons and share them with you guys. So when I set up this whole challenge, there was so much that went into it. You know, I was just talking about it to everyone and putting it out on social media. You know, I had to promote it. I started a GoFundMe, which raised, I think in the end, like somewhere around $10,000. So a bunch of people were supporting and my job actually threw a big fundraiser and we raised some money. So, you know, having all of that kind of accountability and you know setting out to do this whole massive challenge kind of it forces you to act right and those guidelines kind of keep you focused on where you're going and because otherwise if something becomes difficult you could just kind of put it to the side or you know just not really have to face it but when you announce it to the world and kind of make it concrete then what are you going to do just not you know, follow through with it. And in this case, it was such high stakes. You know, I had sponsors involved that I went and found and, you know, they were nice enough to support me. So that you can't really bail out of it at that point. And, you know, for some things that are pretty difficult, having that amount of accountability, as much as it seems like this unwanted pressure, maybe it can give you a little anxiety, but it really is like a necessary driving force to push forward. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, the pressure got pretty intense after that. And you know, the two or three weeks leading up to the challenge and the day I actually left, it was just every day it got closer, it just felt like more and more weight. And I just couldn't honestly wait to start just to be like absorbed in what I was doing and not, you know, thinking about what I had to do. So once I was finally able to leave and all that pressure was done, I mean, pressure wasn't ever really done until the challenge was over, but you know, once I finally left and started doing it, I realized that it wasn't about me anymore. Like, you know, I was so focused on not failing. I was just thinking about I had to get to the skate park, learn my trick and make sure I had a video and enough time to edit it that day. And then once I got over that initial shock and kind of came up with a rhythm, I started to realize it wasn't about me at all. It was about like just experiencing all the places and all the people and just realizing everybody had their own problems and you know different different situations you'd run into you know you wouldn't realize someone would have to travel an hour or two just to get to this one little rinky dink skate park you know in my hometown there's a bunch of them right and we're constantly complaining so you just get to absorb a bunch of different perspectives when you're on a trip like this and you know once i got a rhythm down to making the videos it was a lot easier to experience all the people the food and just all the situations and i think that lesson runs true through all things like once you're completely absorbed in something you realize it's not about you or your pursuit like it has a greater function in the world it's almost like you're just a part of a thing that's a part of another thing <laughs> so after a couple weeks of being on the road and just kind of really getting into a rhythm I started to realize that my overthinking kind of went away. Like I used to always think, should I be doing this? Is this the right thing to do? Or, you know, constantly just arguing with myself in my head. Like, is this right? Is this something I should be doing? And once I had no time and all this pressure kind of on me to do this challenge, all those things disappeared. Like it was just, I'd say yes or no. Like I would just move on and make the choice and that was it because I didn't have any time to just sit and harp on it. And, you know, I still struggle with this now. So it's not like I completely overcame it, but it definitely blew out my perspective on it, made me realize how much I was doing it and that there's like a light on the other side of the tunnel to work towards, you know, like just really trying to become present and not, you know, just really that the habit of overthinking has always been a killer for me. So, it's kind of going with my gut more is something that I learned from doing this trip. Next is wasted time on distractions. So 
there's like just an infinite amount of things that you realize you just, I mean, I was filling my day with all these other little things, you know, whether it was hanging out with people and we're not really doing anything, you know, productive, or maybe you just make problems that didn't really exist, or it's watching Netflix or YouTube or just mindlessly scrolling on Instagram. Everyone has something they're kind of doing that is just like an almost an empty kind of a distraction, right? That you place so you don't have to like face what what it is that you have to do. And you know, when you find what you really want to do and it's like such a like in my case it just I was locked into this zone and all these other little things just disappeared. Like in my day had perfect meaning and drive. It was just like wake up, you know, shower, leave the house early, and then the whole day was kind of organized and shaped as opposed to not really having a mission. And when you don't have a mission, it's easy for other things to kind of take over your time. And this wasn't the first time I felt this. I've done other challenges in the past and you know the same thing kind of happened to me. So now I guess my goal would be to make almost a challenge that could last throughout life where I have like this driven kind of mission and I'm not constantly coming in and out of that. You know, there's nothing wrong with like watching YouTube or TV or movies, anything like that. But there comes a point when all your routines, they get so comfortable that it just becomes difficult to even move, you know, and kind of break those habits. And sometimes the line gets blurry of where you're just, you know, relaxing and watching something to it's starting to consume your life and take over and kind of hold you back. And that leads right into the last thing I learned, which was focusing on myself. So when I was younger, I used to constantly just try to help other people, right? And I just made it like my main focus to always be helping someone. And I realized later on that that was a distraction. Like it's great to help people and be selfless and do nice things. But to me, it got to a point where it wasn't benefiting me anymore. And it was almost more of an escape and not having to face my own challenges or fears or things I had to do in life. You know, so this trip was more than just skateboarding and making some YouTube videos. It was, you know, me really focusing on myself and overcoming, you know, challenges that I faced my whole life. And, you know, while I was doing that in the middle of the trip, when I realized like I was going to accomplish this challenge, I had this feeling of just like, it's almost like pure bliss. Like I was just staring there, driving out the window, just in some random state. And just felt like perfectly meaningful. Like it was exactly what I should be doing and I felt fulfilled. And yeah, I mean, if you have any dreams, passions, desires, anything like that, and you just feel compelled to do them, do them. That's the best advice I can give anyone. And even if you fail at doing it, you'll feel much better doing that than anything else. But just know, pursuing your passion doesn't come easy. You know, it's a lifelong pursuit. I've been doing this since I was, I don't know, like 13 years old. And it's just been my whole life's focus, basically. So, you know, it's not like something where I see an end to it. It's just something I love to do that I do on the side that I'm going to pursue for the rest of my life. So, you know, you can't be focused on the result. You just have to be absorbed in what you're doing. So, yeah, that's it for the video. If you guys want to check out the series I've been talking about the whole time, I'll put a link up here somewhere. You guys can check it out. All right. Thanks for watching.